My name is Dr. Michelle Scott Taylor, and I'm the Chief Program Officer at College Now Greater Cleveland. College Now is the oldest and one of the largest college access organizations in the nation. We provide services to approximately 30,000 students and adults in 80 school districts in six counties. We are a grant-funded organization to serve low-income students, and we also have a fee-for-service model for moderate and high-income districts that we serve. Every day, we work with students who want to enter meaningful careers that require post-secondary education. I was born and raised in the greater Cleveland area. I was a first-generation college student who was able to attend and graduate from the University of Akron because of need-based aid and loans. But it took me 15 years to pay it off. For the past 20 years, I've worked in, higher, in the higher education space where I fo focused on career and college access advising, affordability, and just helping students break barriers to success. I joined College Now 13 years ago to become the Chief Program Officer and build better advising and coaching services for families, particularly low-income <clears throat> and moderate-income students. I've seen firsthand that these families often don't have the resources or knowledge to navigate the very complicated post-secondary landscape. In addition, I have three children of my own, one who attended West Point. And um, just to say, I was remiss in missing you, Chairman, uh, when you came to visit us at College Now, so I didn't get a chance to meet you then when you visited our offices, because I was visiting her in Germany. I had one who just graduated from The Ohio State University, and then I have a third one who's in high school. I know from both my professional and personal experience the incredible impact financial aid can have on our children's future. I also know the significant flaws in Ohio's current system, flaws that are preventing tens of thousands of Ohioans from accessing post-secondary education and success. I want to focus my comments on two aspects of the proposed changes in Ohio's financial aid system. First, the expansion of OCOG to include a greater number of low and moderate income families. The proposal elevates income eligibility to an, adjust, an estimated adjusted gross household income from $60,000 to approximately $87,000. The average family income receiving aid in Ohio has been $48,200, which is significantly lower than the average family income of federal Pell recipients, which averages $70,000. Second, and equally important, is the proposed increase in the maximum award amount for students at four-year programs at public and private universities, from $2,700 to $6,000 per year. This is critical in ensuring more Ohioans can afford and pursue a four-year degree. During the 2022-2023 school year, the state average for the cost of attendance at a four-year public institution was $29,063 after deducting a full Pell Grant of $68.95 and a full OCOT Grant of $2,700, a federally subsidized loan of $5,500, students still faced a deficit of $13,968 to cover room, board, books, computers, and any other fees like health care, health insurance, lab fees, etc. Some students do receive institutional aid. Others work, often two jobs, but many students do all of these things to help offset the cost and avoid debt. Unfortunately, to meet these costs, too many of our students take on debt beyond the federal subsidized loan. The Ohio General Assembly has recognized the need to curb the rising cost of tuition, but we still have 1.8 million people in Ohio with outstanding student loans and an average loan amount of $34,700, well above the national average of $28,950. The proposed increase in OCOG is the difference for many students between going to college and not going, and from taking on debt burden that prevents them from making important investments in their long time Long, I'm sorry, long-term financial health, such as buying a house, investing in retirement, or even deciding to start a family. Increasing investment in OCOG would also make us competitive with other states. Currently, Ohio ranks 39th nationwide in average aid allocated per student. Worse than that, Ohio is dead last in the Midwest. We currently only offer $2,700 per student, whereas neighboring states, including Illinois at $7,200, Indiana at 6,200 are significantly higher. In my testimony, I included a graphic that shows Ohio's last when you look regionally. The governor's proposed $6,000 maximum grant per student would boost Ohio from ninth to third place. However, while we thank the House for including an increase in OCOG as written currently in HB 33, 
the award per student would go down because the total amount in the OCOG line item per year does not cover the increased eligibility that the governor and house included in their bill. Meaning the current OCOG award amount per student would decrease $675 per student, disproportionately affecting our neediest students. That's why we respectfully ask your support, ask you to support our amendment to invest an additional $100 million into the OCOG, into OCOG and change the eligibility from $10,000 expected family contribution to $6,656, which would match the eligibility for Pell. This change will cover an increase in the award per student and capture middle in income families. As a past recipient of need-based aids and someone who manages programs that supports our students, I urge you to support an increased investment in OCOG. Our amendment would help tens of thousands of Ohioans pursue a four-year degree and participate fully in Ohio's economy. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Dolan, Vice Chairman Serino, Ranking Member Sykes, and members of the Senate Finance Committee. My name is Dr. Michelle Scott Taylor, and I'm the Chief Program Officer for College Now Greater Cleveland. College Now is the first and oldest college access organization in the nation. We provide services to approximately 30,000 students and families in about 80 different school districts in six counties. We are grant funded to serve low income students and we have a fee for service model for our moderate and high income districts that we serve. Every day we work with students who want to enter meaningful careers that require post-secondary education. For the past 20 years I've worked in higher education where I focused on career and college advising, access and affordability and helping break barriers for students, having been a first generation student myself. I joined College Now 13 years ago to become the Chief Program Officer, building programs and services, particularly for low and moderate income families. And I've seen firsthand that these families often do not have the resources or the knowledge to navigate the complicated post-secondary landscape. I want to focus my comments on two aspects of the proposed changes in Ohio's financial aid system. First, the expansion of OCOG to include a greater number of low and moderate income families. The proposal elevates income eligibility to an estimated adjusted gross household income from $60,000 to approximately $87,000. The average family income receiving aid in Ohio has been about $48,200, which is significantly lower than the average family income for the federal Pell Grant recipients, which averages $70,000. Second and equally important is the proposed increase in the maximum award amount for students at four-year programs at public and private institutions from $2,700 to $6,000 per year. And this is critical to ensuring that more Ohioans can afford to even pursue a bachelor's degree, at least. During the 2022-2023 school year, the state average for the cost of attendance at a four-year public institution was $29,063. After you deduct a full Pell Grant of $6,800, a full OCOG Grant of $2,700, a federally subsidized loan of $5,500, students still face a deficit of about $14,000, which can be used to cover room, board, books, computers, fees, health insurance, on and on and on. Some students receive institutional aid, others work, often two or more jobs, but many students do all of these things to help offset the cost and try as much to avoid the debt. The proposed increase in OCOG is the difference for many students between going to college and not going to college, taking on debt that bur a debt burden that prevents them from making very important life decisions such as buying a house, investing in retirement, or for some, even deciding to start a family. Increasing investment in OCOC would also make us competitive with other states. Currently, we rank 39th in the nation in overall aid allocated per student. Worse than that, we are dead last in the Midwest. We currently only offer $2,700 per student, whereas neighboring states, including Illinois at 7,200 and Indiana, at 6,200 are significantly higher. 
In my testimony, I included a graph that shows just how poorly we're doing. The governor's proposed $6,000 maximum grant per student would boost us from ninth place to third place. However, while we thank the House for including an increase to OCOG, as written currently in HB 33, the award amount per student would go down because the total amount in the OCOG line per year does not cover the increased eligibility that the governor and the House included in their bills, meaning the current OCOG award amount per student would decrease $675 per student, disproportionately affecting the students that I serve every day, our neediest students. Additionally included in House Bill 33 is a maintenance of effort provision for Ohio colleges and universities, meaning they must minimally maintain their current spending. In other words, college and universities will be prohibited, for example, from making any changes to their respective scholarship or financial aid programs with the goal or net effect of shifting the cost burden of the program now to OCOG. It also requires them to provide at least the same level of need-based financial aid to their students as in the immediate prior academic year. This protects the state's investment and provides an additional mechanism to help Ohio families afford college. And that is why we respectfully ask you to support an additional $100 million into OCOG and change the eligibility from $10,000 expected family contribution to $6,656 which would match the eligibility required for the Pell Grant. This change will cover both an increase in the award per student and capture middle income families and more Ohioans who we need to pursue four-year degrees and help build our economy. Thank you so much.